Welcome to St Mary the Virgin. I'm Colin Walgrove, the sacristan, and uh, I plan telling, uh, telling you a little bit about uh, uh, the worship here at St Mary's. St Mary the Virgin is also known by pilgrims to the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham as England's Nazareth in Sussex. The story of St Mary's could be described as a colourful one in more ways than one. The realisation of a dream, the destruction and subsequent restoration of part of that dream, scandal, personal attacks against a priest and his flock, an armed robbery and murder. Well, this is East Sussex. St Mary's was built by Father Arthur Wagner, the parish priest at St Paul's, Brighton. He became a prominent figure in the Catholic revival and his love of the rich and colourful was very much in evidence, both in the churches he built and their liturgy. When his father died in 1870, he inherited a family fortune and, like his father, built more churches in Brighton. Early in his ministry, Father Wagner founded the community of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This community of nuns ran St Mary's Hospital in Brighton until in 1865 they outgrew the premises and moved to Buxted, where Father Wagner had built a number of retreat houses <clears throat> along with a small chapel. For over 100 years there were nuns here in Buxted, sisters of the community of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the community of St Mary the Virgin, now based in Wantage, and the Society of St Margaret, which was founded in East Grinstead by the hymnologist John Mason Neal, who was a friend of Father Wagner. Sisters of the Society of St Margaret are now based at Walsingham in Norfolk and Chiswick in London, although there are still two sisters living in Uckfield. As the community of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary grew, so did the need for a larger place of worship. The first building, which served as a temporary place of worship, is now St Mary's Church Hall. Building of this church was completed in 1887. A small church compared to other Wagner churches, but it is built in the traditional Sussex style using flint construction in line with the Wagner churches in Brighton and is the only church built by him in the Sussex countryside. Father Wagner's vision for St Mary's was in proclaiming the fullness of faith in word and sacrament, which the church here has done over the past 133 years. The Eucharist is at the heart of church life. It is not an option. St Mary's was designed to satisfy Father Wagner's love of tradition. In keeping with the medieval spirit, the architectural arrangements represent the three main phases of Christian revelation. Firstly, the Old Testament. The sanctuary is built to the proportions of the ark. That is the Ark of the Covenant, not Noah's Ark. This is where the number seven is introduced. Seven was a sacred number among the Jews and it signified perfection or completion. By multiplying the proportions of the Ark by seven determined the dimensions of the sanctuary. The great west window has seven lights and there are seven lancets in the north wall. Secondly, for Father Wagner, the New Testament was epitomised by the medieval holy house at Walsingham. St Mary's Lady Chapel, or Walsingham Chapel, was built to the dimensions of the ancient shrine. In turn, these dimensions are of those of the holy house at Nazareth. The shrine at Walsingham was destroyed in the 16th century, so the, the Walsingham Chapel here became the first restored holy house and precursor 
of the revival of devotion to Our Lady of Walsingham in England. The Walsingham Chapel proclaims Mary's bold and daring obedience. God is with us in Jesus. Thus, we honour her, not worship her. And as she proclaimed, all generations will call me blessed. Thirdly, the Catholic revival is signified in the style of worship and the original decor of the building. The style incorporates symbols or sacramentals, which are visual aids to worship. Like a hug or a wedding ring or a gift of red roses, they can help to encapsula encapsulate profound heartfelt realities and convey inward and spiritual truths. These sacramentals include vestments, making the sign of the cross, the use of holy water, incense and bells, the physical act of genuflection and bowing, the lighting of candles, especially votive candles, which are an aid to prayer, statues, stained glass and pictures. The original decor at St Mary's consisted of many murals painted in bright colours. These were destroyed in the 1950s. The recently revealed painted niches on the east wall that once held the statues of Saints Gregory, Augustine, Wilfrid and Richard only provide a hint of what the original must have looked like. What is our hope for the future here at St Mary's? Well, St Mary's was declared England's Nazareth in Sussex in 1919. The first pilgrimages brought many visitors to the shrine, including those who were unable to travel to Norfolk. These pilgrimages have continued on and off for the past 100 years, depending upon the tradition of the parish priest at the time. In 2019, our centenary year of pilgrimages, we were pleased to welcome three parishes from West Sussex. This year we had planned for more pilgrimages. We even had a full page article in the Anglican publication New Directions. Unfortunately, this article was published in March, just before the country went into lockdown. Suddenly, everything was on hold. However, the article was not wasted, as in enquiries have been coming in from dioceses as far away as London, Gloucester and Norfolk. Therefore, our hope for the future here at St Mary's is a positive one, and we aim to continue the restoration of Father Wagner's dream. So what about the juicy bits, I hear you say? The scandal, the armed robbery, the murder? Well, that is for another day. Finally, next time you visit St Mary's, leave through the exit door from the nave and look up at the lintel. The only other visible remains of Father Wagner's design was painted on sandstone. Therefore, it survived the destruction of the murals. You can just decipher the fading words of our Lord to the woman caught in adultery. It says, go and sin no more. Thank you.